In, in this episode of the State of the Weather Address, we're talking about a pattern change setting up across the United States. What you're looking at here is near and below the jet stream. This is what the look is right now. There's a cutoff low out here and a big river of air going through the west northern United States. But this is going to change potentially dramatically as we head over the next couple of weeks. I'm going to be talking about the changes in precipitation amounts, temperatures, and potentially severe weather and storm tracks across the United States in this episode. But before we begin, I invite you to subscribe below if you like detailed educational weather forecast breakdowns. We show you how we do it as we go along here. So click below and then also comment below. Do you like brighter color schemes like this or do you like darker color schemes with like grays and, and stuff like that in the background? I'm going to be creating new graphics for this channel. I don't know if you guys watch it at night or in the morning. Uh, let me know in the comments below and we'll get right into it. So you're looking at the uh, near and below the jet stream and you can see this troughing here in the southwestern United States. These black lines, when they diverge and you know, they kind of spread, stretch apart and you see a lot of wind associated with it, that's essentially the air getting stretched out in the upper levels that uh, creates lift at the surface. And that's where your storm systems are going to form. We'll look at the jet stream, then we'll look at the actual storms here in precipitation in a second. As we head towards Sunday and beyond here, the 21st, 22nd and beyond, you can see that the pattern changes, that cutoff low that was sitting out here in the mid-Atlantic region, that was really delivering just days and days of rain and cool temperatures across the southeast United States, that finally gets kind of sucked back into the jet stream. It was detached, but now it's going to get sucked back in, so finally it's going to get pushed off to the east. But as you can see now, the, the west coast, all of this river of air, you see this western flow coming onto the, uh, the coast now, northwest flow in the plains, that's going to deliver an increase in severe weather, storms, even some cool air here in the plains as we head towards the 21st and beyond. Meanwhile, just to the south of that, that's going to really warm up activity here in the uh, southwestern United States. As we head towards Wednesday, this is going to be very, very interesting, very consistent modeling here. This is the European computer model. Very strong northwest flow in the plains. When you get that stretching of air, like I said, you're going to get some severe weather, some systems that develop in the southern plains even, very late for this time of year, but potentially some severe weather, some MCSs, so those are those big complexes of se severe storms that deliver uh, some rain across the plains. Tornado activity a little bit lower with northwest flow type setups, but definitely some winds for sure. The southwestern United States, you see this ridging, so the, the arcing here, this is ridging. So this is uh, very warm temperatures, very, you know, not a whole lot of flow there, not a whole lot of pressure changes, so dry and warm for the southwestern half of the United States. This troughing moves to the east, that's going to deliver cool air along and behind it. And then just out ahead of it, that's going to be creating some warm, maybe even some stormy activity for the east, eastern seaboard of the United States. As we head towards uh, Thursday here, you can see that pattern continues and it changes a little bit again. Uh, westerly, northwesterly flow here in the western U.S., also the Midwest. It's going to be delivering some more punches of severe storms in the plains in the southeastern United States as well, really just across this entire area right here. And then you can see a southwestern trough kicks into the area. This is pretty far south for this time of year. You, you actually typically see these things get sucked up into the main jet stream and it moves to the north uh, as we head towards summer with that, that warming. The heat budget moves all to the north. But the European computer model showing a little trough here. We'll have to watch this. I wouldn't be surprised to see this move north or turn it into northwesterly flow by the time we get to the 28th. That's uh, next weekend. But that would deliver potentially tornadic activity if things line up for the plains. And you can see that's uh, showing that as well. Yeah, we'll look at the actual uh, precipitation here and kind of show you what's going on. And then we'll look at the temperature anomalies and how warm or, or how uh, cold, warm, how much precipitation we're going to get here. As you can see here, uh, this is uh, this is around now. That cutoff low is going to dissipate in the southwestern United States, still deliver popcorn activity. Uh, pretty boring for the rest of the United States, except the central United States, where that uh, northwesterly flow is going to be setting up here, kind of westerly right now. But you can see tons of rain here. There is uh, going to be copious amounts of rain that sets up with this activity from the southeastern United States northwestward towards the 
Lee of the Rockies in Montana and Wyoming over the next couple of weeks here with tons of rain and activity here. You can see storm systems, severe weather potentially Saturday for the plains. Not a, whole, not a huge outbreak or anything, but uh, lots of heavy rain. You can see that that continues as we head towards Sunday. And then you get into uh, all the way into next week. That, that Really the entire week, it's just the same story. You know, a wave comes out each day out of the Rockies. With that northwest flow, you're going to see something develop just to the east of the Rockies here. From anywhere from North Dakota down to Texas, those little complexes of storms will develop along the front range in that area of northwest flow, and they'll move to the uh, southeast and also affect the southeastern United States and Midwest region in particular. So not every single day, but uh, many days you're going to see that type of activity develop. So I would uh, predict much above average precipitation for kind of this region, Lee of the Rockies, from the northern plains down into the southeastern United States, maybe even Tennessee area as well. Very dry in the west coast of the United States, probably average precipitation for the eastern seaboard of the United States. Now, temperature anomalies, this is going to be how much warmer than average and colder than average is going to be. So you can see right now, cool in the southeastern United States, that cutoff low. But as we head towards the weekend here, this is what we want to watch here is that pattern changes. That ridging starts to build into the southwestern United States with temperatures 5 to 15 degrees above average. That northwestern flow starts to kind of establish itself eventually here in the northwestern and central United States. Along that, it's going to be a little bit cooler than average. Nothing crazy or anything, not a deep trough or anything, but probably 5 degrees below average on average. And then the east half of the United States, well, I'd say east, maybe eighth of the United States, will be above average out ahead of that trough. Okay, so northwest flow in the, the central United States, more southwesterly in the east. And out ahead of that thing, you might get temperatures 5 to 10 degrees above average the closer you get to the ocean. As we head towards midweek here, this is going to be Wednesday now, or Tuesday night at 7 p.m., you can see that really strong ridging now in the west coast of the United States. With this type of pattern, the northwest flow in the central U.S., you get very warm temperatures in the east or the west coast of the United States, temperatures tend to as much as 25 degrees above average for some folks out there, 90s, 100s in some areas. So very, very warm out there. That area where that northwest flow regime sets up in the central and southeastern United States, you're going to have temperatures around 5 degrees below average on average. Some areas maybe a little bit cooler. Uh, and then that east sliver of the United States a little bit warmer. As we head towards uh, late into the week, you can see those temperatures as we head towards the 26 here. It does flatten out just a bit with that uh, trough, that new southwesterly flow, so another pattern change regime. It would not surprise me to see that go to northwest. I've seen that happen a few times in the models or for this thing to kind of move to the north. Uh, but at the moment, the European computer model along and behind that trough forecasting very cool temperatures for the Rockies. So cool down, a brief cool down for the west coast of the United States, except for the extreme west. And then out ahead of that, wouldn't be surprised to see slightly above average temperatures, even though this is cooler with that type of look. But like I said, I think this is going to be more of a northwest flow or a westerly flow or deal. It's more climatologically, you know, the case in late June. But we'll have to watch that. If that does occur, that would put the severe weather threat skyrocketing for the plains because when you get those southwest flow, if you get that shear, you know, and that if you get a negative tilt with all the instability around this time of year, it could be uh, quite uh, severe. But we'll have to watch that, make another uh, update if that continues. And then again, the East Coast uh, kind of average temperatures. Now, this is what the CPC says in terms of uh, the in terms of the above average temperatures below average temperatures this is for the next six to ten days as you can see kind of where that northwest flow is there's going to be cooler temperatures here setting up across the central united states very very warm here in the west coast of the united states 70 percent chance above average temperatures in some areas good decent chance 60 percent plus in the central u.s and then obviously like i said the eastern seaboard where that, that northwestern flow turns back to southwesterly, just ahead of that is where your above average temperatures are going to be. Days 8 through 14, this is going to go out through early July now. We'll let this uh, load here in a second. As this is kind of lagging, 
Uh, but you know, as we head towards uh, early July, it's gonna you're gonna still get some uh, pretty uh, cool temperatures here in the central U.S., but very warm temperatures here in the southwestern United States. Probability isn't as high, but that doesn't necessarily mean you know it's going to be less warm. It just means that it's, we're getting kind of farther out in advance. The probability is a little bit lower, but from what we've seen, it, it could be very very warm here in the southwestern portion of the United States. Cooler here, kind of where that northwest flow sets up and kind of average here. And then northeastern United States, potentially a little bit above average. In terms of the precipitation, with that pattern, that northwest flow pattern, that's going to put a much above average precipitation here for the southern plains, where we get potentially several MCSs develop in you know, Kansas, Nebraska, Oklahoma, track southeastward, maybe in the Texas panhandle. And that would uh, uptick the uh, rainfall amounts, thunderstorms, and even some severe weather. You'll, you'll typically get these wind events that track through kind of northwest to southeast. And you can kind of see that follows that northwest flow pattern we talked about. North of that flow, it's going to be drier than average. You know, this area typically does get more severe weather this time of year, but I think the pattern is going to be a little bit south. A little bit farther south than what we're used to seeing for the northern part of the United States, particularly Montana and the Dakotas and Minnesota. That could change late month into early uh, early parts of July, but at the moment that looks to be the case. You can see that the above average precipitation extends all the way out into the east coast with this type of pattern, but especially the southern plains. As we head towards uh, days 8 through 14 through early July here, with that change in pattern as we head towards early July, you could see a little bit of uptick in uh, precipitation here in the northwestern United States, and then also the east half of the United States. There's going to be some decent flow that continues to move through that area and delivers you know, that flow on top of that southerly uh, moisture that finally moves to the north. That cutoff flow was kind of blocking it, but it's finally moving to the north, and that will put areas in the southern plains, central plains, midwest, in far northeastern United States at a shot above average precipitation. So with that said, guys, that's going to wrap up this quick pattern change video. Again, comment below if you like darker color schemes or lighter color schemes. I'm going to be creating some graphics for this channel. That's kind of where I've been over the past couple of weeks. We're going to have a big announcement video here in a couple of weeks, maybe a month, when these things are made. So it's going to be pretty cool. Again, comment below with some of your ideas. And I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you soon.